You could throw up excuses all day long, but it's not going to change God's mind because at the end of the day, reality is reality. Amen. It's like the people who, don't, who say, well, hell doesn't exist because I don't believe in it. And they're out there. No, we're actually out here because hell does exist. You don't have to believe it, but I'll tell you what, it exists. It's real. And in you wishing it away doesn't make it not real anymore. It's a fact. You could, you could lie to yourself all you want and reject it, but at the end of the day, you're going you're gonna to find out. Hopefully, unfortunately, you know, hopefully, you don't have to find out the hard way, but either way, you're going to find out. You either accept it now and deal with it and get right with God and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you could just, nope, don't believe it, and then you're going to find out the hard way. Turn if you go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. You say, oh, Pastor Burson, you know, why are you going to all these Old Testament scriptures? You know, we're looking at Isaiah, and we could go to Jeremiah, and we could go to Ezekiel, and we could look at all the messages that they preach, and we could read all those books. We could see what God commanded them to preach, and you're going to see time and time again that they're preaching on sin. They're preaching on the wickedness. They're telling the children of Israel what to do because they're not right with God. Over and over and over again, you're going to find that throughout Scripture, but it's not just the Old Testament. How about the instruction to a pastor, to a preacher in Timothy? The Apostle Paul's instructing Timothy. We're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. A direct instruction that's going to impact his preaching. In the New Testament, there's a New Testament church, Timothy, and you're pastoring that church. Here's what I want you to preach. From the Apostle, the Apostle Paul, from the Holy Ghost. How about that? 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God. He's giving him an instruction. This is a charge. Here's charges. Before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Hey, there's a judge coming. Preach the word. Preach the word. He doesn't say, preach your thoughts. He doesn't say, preach what's in your heart. He doesn't say, preach what people want to hear. He says, preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Look at this. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The people who hate fundamentalism, you know what they want to do? They, they want to read this verse and just say, exhort. And that's all they're going to focus on week after week after week after week. He gave them three charges here about preaching the word. One of them is positive. Two are negative. Reprove. Prove people how they're wrong. Rebuke. Tell people that they're wrong. And exhort. Encourage people. This is New Testament. And he says, do, the, do all those three things with long-suffering and with doctrine. Why is it doctrine important? When you rebuke people, it's not good enough just to rebuke them and tell them they're wrong. You do it with long suffering and with doctrine. You show them, hey, doctrine's coming from the Word of God. This is why you're wrong. This is where you need to get right. You need a rebuking. You need to be shown your transgressions. You need to be shown your sins. But hey, there's some encouragement, right? We'll help you. Follow this way and things will go well for you. That's an encouragement. But these, these people who are lopsided in their Christianity, in their Christian walk, and they just want to hear the exhortation, no, you're missing two-thirds of, of, the, of the puzzle there. This is an instruction to a New Testament preacher. Verse number three, for the time will come. But you need to do this now, because the time's going to come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Again, that word will. They don't want to hear it. They don't, they're not going to endure. They don't want to endure sound doctrine. They don't want to have anything to do with it. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. This is all foretold in Scripture. If we could actually just look to it and read it and say, oh yeah, that's what it says. Look at that. When we don't try to make it say something else, we can just look at it and say, look, there's going to be people they are not going to endure sound doctrine. And because of their own lust, because of their own sins, they're just going to want to give themselves their own teachers because they have itching ears. They just, like, you know, when you have that itch, nothing feels better than scratch that itch, right? 
when you get a mosquito bite, oh man, that's itchy. You want to scratch those things to get some relief. But these people, they have itching ears. They have certain things that they want to hear. I just want, I don't want you to rebuke. I don't want you, I don't want that doctrine. Stop going to the Word of God. Just tell me some encouraging story. Be a motivational speaker to me. Tell me some instance of your life that's going to bring me hope. And that's all I want to hear. But let's not go to the Word of God. And this is what people are doing today. They don't want to hear the sound doctrine. They just want to heap to themselves teachers. And you know what? They're always going to find someone who's willing to stand up and be like, okay, I'll be that teacher. It's a lucrative job. You can make a lot of money doing that. I mean, look at the people who don't claim the Bible, like the, what was it, Tim Robbins, you know, these motivational speaker guys, they make tons of money out doing their seminars and their speaking and stuff. But then you start adding, oh, you know, we're going we're gonna to put some more authority to this by saying, I'm a preacher of God. I'm, uh, you know, this is a church. And we're going to insert the name of Jesus. But basically all they're doing is the same thing. Because they're not going back to the Word of God. They're not teaching sound doctrine. They like the money. 